Hello, 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 everyone that's out there. We are back, and this is going to be pretty awesome. You know, there's a, a huge story that's here that we're going to get into. But my name is Danny Martin. I am the co-founder and CEO of Exposure, and we're here today with non other Dave Fry. What's up, my man? What's up, man? Happy yes? to be here. You happy know, to be here. Been a, been a while, but it's I'm happy to be here. I been. love it. One of the coolest things right now is that you know this industry has the capabilities of building authentic relationships with individuals from all across the world. And I've just been so lucky to be able to meet this individual in our backyard yeah. from years ago. And to see where your journey has led you, to see the impact not only on your community, your family, but even the community within actual NBA 2K is unimaginable. And ultimately, you've given so many individuals across this actual league the opportunity to say, I want to see or be where Dave Fry is and the accomplishments that he's made. The cool thing about this actual space right now is that for the students that are out there, you're looking and you're going to hear from someone who's done it, who's experienced, who's had trials and tribulations, and has come through a full circle, just like Bobby from a competitor, now as a head coach of Mavs Gaming. And the cool thing about this is that you have the capabilities out there as a student to be able to know that there is opportunities within this industry from coaching to graphic designing to photography and videography to production and to content creating and even tournament organizing. And so from this perspective, we're privileged to be able to talk and just bring it back. We're going we're gonna to make this authentic, all right? Okay. So from this perspective, Dave Fry, talk about yourself. Talk about just kind of give like a um, – uh, another like a 10 10 second 15 second elevator pitch of who Dave Fry is yeah man obviously uh I started playing 2k I think I was 20 I might have been 19 um and my first time ever playing land was at your place yeah. um you were in in the basement uh we were in the basement together and I think that you know we we had a good group of guys that were in the Dallas area and to kind of use that platform to give me an idea of what it could be I think that kind of motivated me so I, I'm forever grateful for you man, man honestly vice versa man definitely Another thing from my perspective, it's like I seen your passion for NBA 2K very early on, and I seen your leadership and the ability for you to be able to, you know, impact your teams and your surroundings. Where did that come from? How did that start from you? Was that something that you just grew up? Is that just because you're from Dallas? Like, how did that even come out? How do you have that, that true leadership capabilities? Uh, I mean, honestly, I can't give you a straightforward answer. I would just say when I went to college to play baseball, I feel like I sold myself short. I didn't take it as serious as I think I wanted to. I, I think I underachieved in my baseball side of things. So whenever I got into 2K, I kind of wanted to, you know, take the most of the opportunity. I felt like 2K was such a new thing. It was so different. But there was, you know, obviously money was involved. It was a career path that I thought was really, really cool. And I thought the community was just dope. There, You know, you could play with people from England, play from Germany. You know, I had a, my roommate from season one, Haza, man, if you're watching. Um, you know, he was from England. And I think that was the coolest thing for me. So I, I didn't want to take it for granted. I think that's the biggest thing I would say. And uh, so I, I would just say coming in, and I just was motivated, and I wanted to make sure if, if I had another opportunity to do something that I love to do, I wanted to make the most of it. Yes. Esports community. Who are some of the most impactful individuals that you've had in your life that help you become who you are today? Most impactful individuals. Obviously, I, th I would say you. Uh, you gave me gave me the first land event experience. That was really really cool. It's um, important. We're overnight, you know, playing against each other for you know ten bucks, yeah, whatever it man. was. You know, we're just <laughs> we're we're staying up eight nine in the morning, man. My parents are like, why are you in Dallas? You know, they didn't know they didn't know no better. But I would say obviously you, uh, Pat. You know, taking a chance on me, Jonah, my my first coach with the the Mavs. Um, I just think a lot of people impacted my life in a positive way and. Obviously, uh, Grant, you know, the, the old manager for the uh, Wizards, man, he was, he was amazing. So was Andrew. I think we, I've had some great individuals around me, and I think that's definitely molded me who I am now. That's awesome. So full circle moment. You're with Mavs now. Yeah. What are some of your um, – you don't have to put the cat out the bag, but kind of give some, some of your goals, some of the things that you're looking to be able to – this is your hometown, yeah. you know? Like talk about how big this moment is for you and what you're looking to accomplish over the next course of the seasons. I would say uh, just for me to accomplish, man, honestly, obviously I could sit here and be like, yeah, I want to win a championship. You know, that's the, the, the cliche thing to say. But the biggest thing for me is I want to build a relationship with every player that comes through, right? I feel like the most success we had when I was on the Wizards was not because we were just good at the game. We had an actual personal relationship with each other, right? Yes. And I think, you know, once you can actually talk to people and sit them down and, you know, not about 2K, not about anything, you know, just about life, I think you get the most out of people. You get to know who they are as, you know, as human beings, not just 2K players, not just, you know, yeah. whoever you take them as. And I think – that would be my biggest, biggest, like I say, goal 
going in and you know if we're good bad whatever i just want to make sure the relationship side where they know they can come to you know come to my apartment come to talk to me come to my parents place they want to go to barbecue like i want that man i want them to feel like when they come to dallas they have a second home you know i think that's the most important thing especially being away from your family for six months it's definitely important it is so you've already hit the ground running in regards to getting active in the community talk about some of the things you've done so far in dallas in regards to helping and supporting students and individuals of underrepresented communities and individuals of all backgrounds yeah man uh shout out to trey by the way trey thompson man shout shout out to trey our community guy (laughs) man he gets it done man he's one of those guys that he comes in every day man you know he's resilient just wants to help the community as much as possible and you know, he'd ask me, hey, man, you know, you want to do this, you want to do that. I can't tell a guy, yeah. no, man, we're going to schools, man. We're, you know, these kids want to learn about yes, this stuff. They're, sure. you know, they're, they're super ambitious. You know, they're, yeah. there's full of questions, you know. Yes. And so, like, obviously Dallas Hyper Prep, we just went there last Thursday. Yeah. Boys and Dr. Romero Oga. Yeah, so, and then uh, the Boys and Girls Club, yep. I think we did that. I think it was a couple weeks ago. I think it was around Christmas we went and did that. Um, I didn't get to go, but Carolee, obviously, she went to the uh, the Wounded Warriors. She she went out there because, obviously, we had some stuff that we had to do on our side. But we've done, you know, four or five events already, and Trey's just, like, in it, man. Yes. Like the, the I think we did the food pantry, the yes. uh, Minnie's food pantry. just And he's like, anything that, you know, he's like, hey, man, you want to do it? I'm like, yeah, why not, man? For like, sure. why not? Because I, I feel like if he's devoting his time to it, I can devote my time, yeah, right? You know, sure. especially if it's where I grew up at. Yeah, man, I can't say no. Understandable. Definitely understandable. So, right now, you have the capabilities of – winning the championship for season six okay. one of the things that's going to be special to me if that if that happens but we're going to be behind you no matter what at right. the end of the day we feel as if like you have a story to be able to tell to students and ultimately them being able to hear it and be inspired to do something even greater is even important more even important right so from our perspective what would you provide to those actual students as a form of advice like what would you say i'm wanting to take two things from the things the, from where I've experienced in my life that's going to help them be able to be successful in their life man the biggest thing I'd say is two things I would say urgency matters how you how you go about your stuff like having like a sense of just like getting stuff done I think that's a big big thing a lot of people will just go through the motions you know just collect their checks whatever whatever it is I think urgency is huge in any any workplace any job you do anything and I would just say trust in the person next to you I think I, early in my career, when I was, you know, when I was on the Mavs, when I was my first year on the Wizards, I thought I was hot shot, man. I thought I was, you know, big, big man on campus. And until I started to open up to people and started to actually try to build a relationship with people, that's when, you know, we got good. And I think um, so. Trust and urgency definitely be the two things I'd probably say. You know, just going in, going through, you know, whatever grind anybody goes through, you definitely need that. Yes. Would you be able to share a story that you've had? from that of a student that you've impacted since you've been in Dallas or even at any other points of other teams that you've been a part of. Like, share a story to that student or that parent that's out there that's like, I'm not quite knowing if this may be the direction of my student. I'm not knowledgeable enough. But give that story that impacted you or, like, something that you've heard from that active student that said, hey, this spoke to my heart to make me want to keep doing this. Yeah, so we did a we did a community event in D.C., actually. So we were on the Wizards. Uh, we were at a – it was like a, a gaming convention type deal, and there was a kid. He came up, maybe 12, 13. It was me, Brandon, and Dini, and we're sitting there. And he's like, "Hey, man, like, you know, I, we didn't have much kids come up. It's a huge gaming convention, right? You know, we're, we're the guy, you know, we're not, we're not like the, the focal point, you know, up there. So, we're sitting there, and we're talking to this kid, and he's like, he's like, "Hey, man, how do I get into this, man? I play 2K, you know, whatever." So we kind of explained it to him. So, essentially, he would hit up Brandon. He got Brandon's number, yeah. and he would text Brandon after every game. Y'all, y'all did great. Y'all did great. And then so he got his parents into it. So now I think he's actually pursuing. It. I think he's still young. He got a couple yeah. years, but. I think now he's actually getting into it. So uh, B. Rich actually played in the tournament. He was on the Xbox side. I think it got eliminated a little earlier. But Brandon could tell you the story better than I can. But he uh, that was really cool. Like, just to see, you know, him go home, show his parents, like, oh, I met these guys here. Like, you know, because you know, they could see the face cams, whatever. It was, it, that was really cool. I think that was probably the coolest thing that's happened to me. Honestly. So let's talk about the growth of esports. How long have you been in the industry? Been in the industry, I guess. That's my sixth year. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess seven years. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to count 2K17, that's yeah. the road to the All Star Game. Okay. We qualified for that. Um, and was was crazy about that was I didn't realize there was a community for 2K. I mm-hmm. didn't realize there was anything. You know, I was going to college to play baseball. I just seen a $250,000 tournament, and I'm like, dude, if I can have a chance to play video games and make 50 grand just <laughs> myself, like if we win the tournament, that's $50,000 yes. just for me. And it's like, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, why not? You know, right? And um, so I would say seven years now. Um, and the growth of esports has been insane. Obviously, from Road to the All-Star Game, there was a really small community. You know, people didn't really know each other yet. Yeah. And now you see you see the venue, right? You yeah. see everything. You see it's amazing, man. You see everything uh, just kind of unfold the way it is. And even, like, the 
the tournament in Vegas, tournament in yes. Philly, now in Dallas. Like you just see the growth of 2K and even esports all together. I think it's really cool to be a part of. So let's talk about some of your job duties as a head coach of a professional okay. esports team. Okay. For a student that's like, what is what does he do on a daily basis? Okay. What does that look like? Kind of talk to him. On a daily basis, a lot of interviews. Yeah. Um, you know, we're in the interview process. We, I think me and Bobby have done 49 interviews. I think I know I'm lying. I think it's 57 now 57. in about wow. three weeks. So interviews have been fun. Obviously, you, you handle, you know, trades. Obviously, you got to run it up, you know, your boss and this and that. But you handle trades, kind of where you want to be at. Um, you know, the draft process, you're kind of the head honcho for that. You know, who you want. You kind of dictate, you know, draft board, where you want guys at. And a lot of scouting, man. You just watch these guys. And the good thing about where I'm at now, I've played against a lot of these guys for so long. I kind of know who's good. I kind of yeah. know, like, weaknesses, strengths. Yeah. So me and Bobby both have that advantage, I would say, over some coaches. Just because when you play against people, you kind of understand the, the impact they kind of have on the yeah. game. Even if they're not, like, a big stat guy or whatever, you know you play against somebody, you're like, okay, that guy makes an impact. Even if yes. he doesn't, like, put up a bunch of stats or whatever, you know his, like, presence is on the court. Yes, I love it. So give everybody out there, so most of the individuals from a student perspective are local, what's your favorite barbecue spot that's here in Dallas? In Dallas, I love Pecan Lodge. That's yeah, solid. I love Pecan, Pecan Lodge. Lodge. Uh, Terry Black's is a good one, too. Yeah, I love me sure. some Terry Black's. And you just brought some awesome barbecue. I can see yeah, it from here. Yeah, I hope it turns out good. You know, like <laughs> I said, I, I think it's all right, but, you know, everybody has their own opinion. I, I, I can't wait to go back in there and, you know, see what everybody has to say. I want to hear the, the critiques and whatnot, but, yeah, but – uh, me and my dad, you know, we got into this barbecue business, me and my dad and a guy named Zach, and we're getting into it, and I think it's really, really cool. Kind of show what eSports has done for me. Now yes. I got a chance to actually retire my pops, and I think that's a, a really cool thing for me. Yeah. Obviously, my dad was the, you know, number one supporter coming up. I wouldn't say for 2K, you know, yeah. but uh, when I was first getting into it, but I kind of reversed it on him now. Now I'm his number one supporter, <laughs> man. I want him to go do his thing. So I, I think it's really, really cool, man. So, yeah, man, uh, I'm excited. I'm definitely oh, excited. my gosh, that's awesome. So leave the students with two things that you feel as if like has just impacted you and I know it's kind of redundant but I just I feel like they have to be able to hear it. two things like with two words that you may feel as if like you just have to have in regards to being the best human yeah. that you possibly can be not outside of professional yeah, gamer yeah. or a profession but just human. I would say I don't have two words for you, but I got a phrase that said, be nice. There's two be words nice. for it. Be you nice go. to people, man. I think uh, networking is so big, right? Relationships. If I never met you, yeah. I would have never, you know, known what, what was going on. You were a guy who reached out to me. I could have been like, oh, what's this guy want? Whatever. Yeah. You reached out to me, and, hey, man, I'm doing this, and I thought it was a cool idea. And I think you you start to realize how much relationships matter in any workplace. Anything you do, any, you know, college, you know, high school, just be nice to people, man. I think a lot of the stuff, you know, you start to realize how much it matters when, you, when you're in the whole process. But, man, it's, it's awesome, man. I'm happy to be here, and it's, it's definitely exciting. That's awesome. So we got some questions okay. from individuals. Okay. So the first question, what's normally, requires, what's normally required as a competitive NBA 2K League Pro-Am team for teenagers? Like, what if you're a teenager, how do you get into the Pro-Am scene? Like, what advice would you give them to get in the Pro-Am scene? Uh, I'll give them advice in the sense of obviously UPA is hosting this event. Yep. Try to get in some, you know, WR. Um, you got ADBA, you got MPBA. They got some WR select leagues. Even if you're, if you're a guy that doesn't have a team, you can get in these draft leagues and you meet people. Man, it's the same with networking. Like you meet people, you kind of get to understand the community a little bit better. Um, I think there's so many ways now to really get into it. Because when I first got into it, I didn't really even know there was a, a community yet. Mm -hmm. So now there's so many outlooks. Like I mean, you got obviously you got comp he'll retweet any tweet you put out about yep. 2k obviously famous if you hit up kurt lt all those yep. guys will look out for everybody so it's so much easier now to get into it so uh, there's really no excuse if you want to get into it you can you know there's there's plenty of outlets to get into it for i love it so ultimately right now you know season six is coming um you see some individuals out there that you want to bring into the team yeah. you know how important are these live experiences for your recruitment efforts Definitely important. Uh, I think just seeing guys, how they interact when they're up, when they're down, um, you know, how they act after they lose, after they win, it definitely matters. Obviously, how they perform on stage is how they perform on stage. I, I think people kind of gas the stage aspect of, oh, he didn't play good on stage. I think it's more about their character, how they hold themselves after a loss, after a win, how they talk to their teammates. Like, the listen-ins are great because you get to see – you know, when it's high pressure, a lot of money. Now, now yeah. the real character comes out. It's yeah, not the one that's sure. like, oh yeah, let's go. Yeah. You know, it's not that no more. You got, for you sure. get to hear like, you know, the real passion, the real stuff, and that's the stuff that I think matters the most. I would say in the league because you got six months with these guys, yeah. right? Or girls, excuse me. Yeah. You get six months living, playing, and you you only really know these people in yeah. the city. Yeah. So it's you have to understand that bringing in people that want to be around people that want to be great, I think is the biggest thing. And just, you know, good people, like just people that won't come in every day, work hard and just want to be friends with people too. Like yeah. uh, buy into the team aspect of things, I think is the biggest thing. Well, Dave Fry, you know, I'm going to take too much of your time. 
at the end of the day, we're going to be here to support Mavs Gaming, yourself, Bobby, the team, the staff, everybody. We want to be able to bring attention, communica community to you guys, um, and we're going to work our butts off to make sure that that's happened. You know, you definitely got us when – uh, when the when the announcement was made, I was like, man, this is pretty cool to be able to see. It was full circle. Yeah. It's the story that individuals within this actual community should be able to see. Um, and you have the capabilities of now being on the other side and impacting someone's life dramatically. Yeah. Is that a lot of pressure? No pressure. No man. pressure. No pressure, man. <laughs> yeah, you enjoy it, man. It's you it's you know it. it's it's kind of what I've always wanted to do, man. So I couldn't even say it's pressure, man. I'm excited. You know, you just kind of take the opportunity for what it is, man. And if I mess up, it is what it is. Hey, we we're gonna keep it. We're gonna we're gonna right keep foot it forward. Moving, we keep going. I promise we'll be all right. So yeah, I'm man. So much about this event just in itself. Yeah. You know, just gotta keep processing. It, it, get it was better. crazy. People don't even know you've done this before. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you've had your own leagues. <laughs> you've done it before. So just uh, now, people that in the community know who you are. They yeah. see your face. They they know like yeah, Danny's a guy you want to have around. Danny's a guy that works. Excuse me, yeah. you know, his butt off. I won't say, I won't say, but he, he takes care of his business, man. Yeah, for sure. I love it. You're good. I love it. So, ultimately, right now, Trey, come on in here. Dave Fry, this is going to be cool. Thank you, my man. What's up, man? What's up? Trey, yo, Trey, yo, Trey, yo. Trey, 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 Trey. What's happening? What's happening? So, talk to the, introduce yourself to the individuals, because you're, you're behind the scenes, but you're in front of the scenes just as much. Talk to them about who Trey is, what Trey does. Um, and what impacts Trey? What makes Trey go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's up, everybody? My name is Trey Thompson. I am the Corporate Social Responsibility Manager here for the Mavs Gaming and the Dallas Mavericks. And so a little bit about what I do, I create. I create programs that help continue to bridge our ecosystems for gaming, for community, and to continue to bridge gaps for all of our socioeconomic needs so we can continue to build a more healthy and equitable culture for all. Oh, my gosh, that's everything. You grew up in Duncanville. Yes, you sir. Yes, sir. You graduated from Duncanville ISD, Duncanville High School. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what are you looking to be able to provide back to Duncanville? Like what, how, how do you feel like you can maximize the opportunities and the support you have from Mavs Gaming to that of your school that you graduated from as not only just Duncanville, but we have about seven ISDs in our area, including Dallas ISD. What are some of the things that you want to do to impact the students of those particular schools? Yes, absolutely. I think the key for me is to continue to build more grassroots programs to continue to address all the needs of our community, whether it's through competitive gaming, whether it's through community uh, programs, whether it's through education, whether it's through, you know, anything that we can continue to do to bridge gaps, but also unify all of our districts. So you think about Duncanville, DeSoto, Cedar Hill, Lancaster. Uh, graduating from Duncanville was one thing, but we were all still a part of a larger Southern Dallas community. And with esports and gaming being a unique opportunity to create the next generation of entrepreneurs, you know, your esports immersion program where you're teaching kids how to build budgets. These are things that we have to continue to operate and show show these kids that this is real and you can literally build your next future with these opportunities and we just want to make sure that we're highlighting it so that way people from the outside looking in find more effective ways to get involved support whether it's through sponsorship whether it's through donations and whether it's just overall just spreading the word spreading the message so we can continue to build a more equitable world for all so for those that are out there just know as we talk amongst our teams all the time in exposure there's over 200 digital careers in the esports and gaming space one of the things that you've experienced, how do you feel as, and make it quick for me, how do you feel as if, like, or what advice would you give a student to be in Trey's shoes? Don't give up. Stay the course. Know yourself. Do not fall into the crowd. Um, if you have a goal, stick with that goal and follow through and continue to seek positive leadership so you can continue to go forth on your journey. I love it. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, brother. For sure. Absolutely.